about to go to the LinkedIn Oregon in just one moment. But first, I want to remind everybody that the Alex Jones Show, uh, Volume 1, Best Of, is out in the DVD arsenal. We're going to be doing one of these every uh, month or so. Uh, this one features Joe Rogan, David Icke, Alan Watt, Gerald Salente, and Art Aceveda in DVD quality. If you missed any of those shows or you're not a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber or if you're just looking for some something to turn other people on to, via the radio format. You know, one of the favorite one of my favorite shows while I was in high school was the E show for Howard Stern. It's really what put me over the edge to watch uh, you know, E. Yeah, yeah, let me check that out. Is that, is that for the second month? We're we're now offering the second month as well, right? Here's just a a quick look at what the uh, cover looks looks like right here. And uh obviously Russell Means is featured in the second one, Lindsay Williams, Edwin Vieira, Sean uh, Kissinger or Kassinger, I'm sorry. Uh, Craig Powdley and the State Sovereignty Special, so go check that out, out as well. And remember, we also have Reflections and Warnings, the new Aaron Russo picture. Uh, it really goes past what we put out for free uh, sometime back, I think two years ago, with the uh, Aaron Russo interview. It goes in-depth, really has a host by Alex Jones, really brings you up to speed with what's happening, what his predictions that have come true are. And it's a great companion piece to America, Freedom, to Fascism. We want you to make copies of all these films and hand them out to your friends, family, your neighbors, people you work with. And just get them out there, get the info out there, and get people turned on to the truth. Get them involved. Get them to take action. I mean, they can't do this, this just horrific agenda without our help. And we've been very apathetic and helpful so far, whether you realize it or not. All right, the links in Oregon, you're on the air, sir. Hey, Jason, how's it going? Good. I uh been listening to your show since you, since you started and uh haven't had a chance to call in because usually I'm working. Mm -hmm. And uh I just wanted to spit a few things at you that I've been building up over the over the weeks and months. Mm -hmm. and, sure. Uh first off, the uh you you've had people call in and talk about a couple times the uh the uh, conspiracy on aliens controlling the globe and like the globalists are actually from another planet and whatnot. Sure, sure. Well, uh I've kind of looked into that, and I've thought about it. You know, I'm not, I'm not for it or against it, but uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard for people to say one way or another when uh, 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 the Discovery Channel, for one, spends millions of dollars on their on their shows trying to disprove aliens even exist. See, I don't think so much that they do that, though. Um, you know, maybe the Discovery Channel takes kind of a slanted view, but how many shows out there like UFO Hunters are there? How many, we you know. How many weeks a year does the History Channel dedicate to UFOs? You know, it's UFO Weekend or UFO Week. It's Inside Roswell, and it's not just the Discovery Channel, and it's not just the History Channel. It's TLC and everything else of that nature, and Fox was a big proponent of this theory. Um, you know, I just need to see more evidence, and for me, I don't think there's, a, uh, there's any doubt that there is other life out there in the solar system. What that life may be, I don't know. And that there are, of course, unidentified flying objects, but what they may be, I don't know. Uh, you know, for me, the most compelling evidence for, you know, artificial intelligence of some sort outside of our own solar system are those NASA UFO videos um, where, you know, either these are very large aircraft or some kind of biological entities. Uh, but the Tether incident, we've played it on the program. I don't know if you actually watch the PrisonPlanet.tv, but we've played the Tether incident on this program. I'm, you know, I'm on the fence. I mean, do aliens exist? I don't know. I know that there's a huge push out there to make us believe what an alien looks like is, you know, this bald, skinny being with large eyes and a slit for a mouth and maybe a slit for a nose. And, you know, when I watched that horrific movie, uh, the, the latest Indiana Jones, which just might as well throw up in my mouth, what are they pushing? They're pushing kind of this new age theory of aliens. They're not just from outer space anymore. They're interdimensional aliens from the fourth dimension that are our masters and rulers and our creators. And I, I see that being pushed sometimes even in this movement, and I've really got to pull back. And i got to say, well, you know, there's a ton of, you know, interesting stuff about the Anunnaki and ancient civilizations and, you know, Mayan and Incan culture and even in the Bible. You know, one of my yeah. favorite History Channel specials out there is UFOs in the Bible. But all that language, you know, gets translated over the years and years and years and stories. You know, you've played telephone before with other people. You can see how things oh, get yeah. distorted. And for me, you know, I like to stick to uh, the scholars that, that don't go way over the top. Not that I don't enjoy reading a Jim Mars or checking out his <laughs> work or, or listening to Jordan Maxwell or even David Icke. Man, I, I've sat through the seven-hour lectures of Icke. I remember sitting in my 
you know, little cubicle when I had my desk job, and I was just happy as can be to have that. And in the corner, I would have, you know, David Icke's, uh, you know, one of his lectures, his seven-hour lectures running. I'd be interested in it and check it out. But, you know, I have not seen anybody shapeshift into an alien. I have checked out all, you know, the crystal skull stuff, the alien autopsy, uh, the supposed right. videos of other aliens. I just have not seen any clear-cut evidence, number one, that they exist, or number two, that there is this agenda, you know, of, you know, fourth dimension reptilian blood-sucking aliens that have to keep us in fear. <laughs> I mean, that's a great allegory. It, it sounds a lot like V, which it was this 80s sci-fi show, if people don't know about it. You know, I enjoy watching Robot Chicken when they make fun of V and everybody's a reptile. I sure as hell hope that I'm not up against, you know, interdimensional reptiles, you know, from another, oh, yeah, from another planet. <laughs> if that is the case, I mean... I guess, you know, there's evidence, and I have to step up to the plate. In light of evidence, I will step up to the plate. Until then, I've, I've just got to keep it in the hokey realm. And, you know, you keep your mind open to everything. You know, anything out there, friend, is a possibility, but you really have to pull back and say, hey, what are the probabilities of this? What evidence have I really been shown? And who's pushing this agenda? I mean, when Fox pushes an agenda, you, you better think twice about it and really – I remember the 80s, you know. I mean, I think Robert Lazar and his story is incredible if it's true. You know, if it's true, it is an incredible story and it needs to be explored. If he's a disinformation agent, he's a good one, you know. And, and But at the same time, it was the same, that period when all of a sudden, you know, people were going through walls and they were, you know, being abducted. And I've even done interviews with uh, Whitley Strieber. Uh, if people don't know who Whitley Strieber is, you know, he's out of dreamland. He does. Uh, he did communion. He wrote that book. It became a movie with Christopher Walken. He is an adamant uh, claimer that he has been abducted by aliens. I don't know if that's true. I've never seen an alien. I've never been abducted. I, I just don't know. I thank you for the call, man. You know, interesting caller. Got me kind of off on a side subject, but I guess it needs to be addressed. All right, let's go to Rick in New York. Rick, you're on the line. Hey, yes, sir, Jason. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know what that guy said. I talked about a month ago. So you get up to New York. I'll buy lunch there. Hey, you want to hear a good one? I seen Richard Haas on uh, uh, Washington Journal this morning, so I had to call it. And, you know, you can just keep hitting redial, and sooner or later you get on. Usually any time I try to get on, I get on. And he was talking about, he's got a book about the Iraq war, and then I asked him about, I said, I get my information from uh, InfoWars, Alex Jones, and uh, I said, uh, how's your book compared to the Smedley Butler's book about the uh, uh, the overthrow this uh, when General Spedley Butler went in front of Congress and exposed the fact that he was asked to overthrow this country. Yeah, he was, asked to, over, he was asked to uh, overthrow this country with the help of J.P. Morgan and Prescott Bush. Right, they basically wanted to, yeah, they wanted to get rid of Roosevelt because as much as they liked Roosevelt and the elite, they really wanted that Hitler-Mussolini model over here. And only because Smedley Butler worked with these people up until the moment where they could really thwart this plan do we even know about it? And, of course, nothing really happened. There was a little slap on the wrist for uh, right. Prescott and his buddy. Right. Well, I was surprised to see Richard Haas. I a couple of callers asked him about, you know, the Council of Foreign Relations. You know, he's the the, uh, the CEO or president. I was I lost track what I was going to ask him. I was going to mention about David Rockefeller and his book, Memoirs, about uh, uh, saying that uh, if you talk about a one-world government, he's guilty. Basically what he says in that quote, he says, you know, there are those out there that believe that I am part of this secret cabal to bring in global governance. And he says, to those people, I say guilty as charged. I do want a one-world government. And you quote that, and people say it just doesn't exist. Meanwhile, it's straight out of Rockefeller's memoirs. We have the book in the back. It's going to be featured in my next film, Invisible Empire. It's already been featured not only in Road to Tyranny, but also Endgame and Zeitgeist. But people just say it doesn't exist, sir. David Rockefeller loves us so much. I thank you for the call. Yes, he loves humanity. David Rockefeller, that's why he's talking to Oprah in secret meetings, because he wants to go on Oprah and help the world. David Rockefeller, good man. All right, let's go to Cytor in Indiana. Cytor, you're online. My mess. How you doing? Uh, man, I sent you a clip uh, two days ago about Richard Gage was on KNPH Fox 26 in uh, Fresno, California, talking mm -hmm. about 9-11 and how he had evidence, and I thought that was pretty huge. And uh, mm -hmm. I hadn't heard y'all cover it yet. No, we did. I, I covered it on uh, either Friday's show or, no, it was either Friday during mine right or, or Friday during mine. I guess I missed it. And, uh, man, I just had a maybe a solution out there. Maybe, ho hopefully this money bomb is going to be huge. And I'm